So if you're recording yourself or someone else singing or playing guitar, and there's a delay between when you sing or play guitar and hear it back in the headphones, then that can be really distracting and it can make you go out of time when you're recording. I'm gonna give you some tips on how you can reduce that really annoying latency. That's all coming up. How's it going guys? It's John Holt here with The Audio Journey, helping make music production accessible to all. And here on this channel, what I do is a variety of tutorials focused towards beginners and beyond. So if that's something you might be interested in, then definitely consider subscribing. So as I explained in the intro, latency can be a real problem when you're recording. So let's dive straight into my tips on how you can fix it. Tip number one, reduce your buffer size. So firstly, let's explain what buffer size is inside your audio software. It's a period of time that you give to the audio software to process that audio and spit it back out. So the lower the buffer size, the less time you give the audio software to process your audio and pass it back out. So it comes through the software quicker, back into your headphones quicker, and there's less delay in hearing it. So if that's the case, why don't you just have the buffer size on the smallest setting all of the time and give the software not a lot of time to process the audio at all because you're gonna hear it back quicker and there's gonna be no latency. So the problem with that is, if your computer isn't powerful enough to process the audio that quickly, then it's not gonna sound good. And when the audio does come through, especially if you're using effects like reverbs, compression, EQ, you're gonna get glitches and clicks and pops in your audio because the audio doesn't have time to process it. So essentially, it's about finding a balance between the latency and your computer's processing power. So inside Ableton, if you wanted to change the buffer size on a Mac, you would come up here and go to preferences, audio, and your buffer size is just here. If you're on a PC and you're in Ableton, you'd come up to option and then the bottom option is preferences. And in different pieces of software, it's just gonna be in settings or audio or preferences, somewhere like that. Number two, use higher sample rates. Now, when you're recording audio, like a singer, for example, you set a sample rate to record at. Now, I'm gonna explain what that means briefly so you can understand why recording at a higher sample rate can reduce your latency. So, when a singer sings into a microphone, just like this one here, that sound wave is passed through into the audio interface, and then that audio interface will take thousands of little snapshots of that sound wave to be able to make a digital copy of it to put into the computer. So, sound wave into the microphone, into the interface, and then that sound wave has snapshots or samples of it taken thousands of times a second. Now, the amount of those little snapshots or samples that are taken of that sound wave every second is called the sample rate. The most common sample rate to use is 44,100 or 44.1K. Now, sample rate directly links to buffer size because when you set your buffer size, you don't do it in terms of time in milliseconds in most software, you do it in samples. For example, most software, when you're given choices for buffer size, will offer 64 samples, 128, 256, 512, 1024, powers of two, and all of those values are in samples. So if you think about it, if that audio is being snapshotted 44,100 times a second, and you're only using 128 of those samples right at the beginning to process the audio, your computer's got a lot of work to do. However, strong, powerful computers can handle this. So here's how you can half your latency with two clicks. If you double your sample rate from 44,100 to 88,200, your audio interface is taking twice as many snapshots of that audio wave per second, twice as many. If you then leave your buffer size at the same amount of samples, then it's half the time, if that makes sense. If you need any further clarification on that, then feel free to leave a comment down below. I'll jump in and explain it a little bit more for you. And finally, number three, optimize your session and your computer. When you're recording and using something like Ableton, Pro Tools, Logic, or GarageBand, if you've got effects like reverbs, delays, compression on your tracks when you're recording, they're basically gonna add to the amount of work that your software has to do to spit that audio back out within that buffer size of time. So 
you're more likely to experience problems like glitchy audio, clicks and pops, if you've got loads and loads of effects on. So essentially when you're recording, do so without those effects. Take the reverb off, take the delay, compression, all off. You do want it on the vocal eventually, but not while you're recording it. Then the great thing is as soon as you've recorded and you're not doing any more recording in that session, you can pile the plugins on and you can whack your buffer size to the highest setting you want because the latency doesn't matter. You can say to the computer, right, take it easy. It doesn't matter how long you take to spit this audio out, just as long as you process it all properly with the reverbs, delays, compression, whatever I've got going on. You need to take your time, process it properly, but then I want it spat back out sounding really, really nice. So if you find that even with a fairly modest buffer rate set, you're still getting clicks and pops in your audio, then what I'd recommend you do is optimize your PC, whether it's Windows or Mac, for handling real-time audio because it's quite a, an intensive process for your computer to do. I've included two links down in the description below, one for Mac and one for PC, on how you can optimize your PC to handle real-time audio a little bit better. And it means that if you, if you do run through these optimizations, you can probably take your buffer size down a notch or two and not get clicks and pops. So guys, I hope this video has been helpful. If it has, then please do leave a like. It really does mean a lot to me. And if you do have any more questions on this week's video, I know it's been quite a theory based one this week, and then feel free to leave any questions down in the comments below and I will get back to you. If you haven't already, be sure to check out the free guide to getting into music production that I've made, which is the seven key elements of music production. I'll link it up in the description below for you. Now, thank you for your time this week. I've been John Holt with The Audio Journey, and I hope to see you again soon. Take care.